Hey everyone, it's Brick Waffle, and today I'm happy to announce that I've reached 100 subscribers. Uh, I know for a lot of the YouTubers out there that's not a big deal, but for me, with my first YouTube channel, that's pretty impressive. I'm pretty happy about that. And so I thought what I would do is take a break from the Redstone series and give you a little tour about what I've been doing in my multiplayer world with some of my uh, personal friends in real life. Um, again, I'm still thinking about starting up a, a kind of a fan server. Uh, I, I don't want to be uh, so conceited as to think I actually have a lot of fans that will want to play it yet. But uh, if, you, if you guys are interested in playing on maybe featuring in some of these videos, please do let me know in the comments. Um, if you've been watching since the first video, you can see that just to the right of the center here, you can see that Dragon Skull Nether Portal. And uh, shout out to Panda Koenig Tro, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, a YouTuber who suggested that I replace the glowstone in the eyes with lava. Uh, you're right, that's an absolutely amazing touch. And you can see that there's the waffle entrance here. And I'm going to take you through these towers, uh, show you that mob farm. You can kind of see in the background there the giant brick waffle with the lava syrup coming out of it. Uh, you can see that we've got some beacons in place. And I'm going to show you around a little bit more as we go through. So let's start by trying to get in here without dying. Perfect. Okay, so at the entrance to the, ba the base, we've got this red wall here. We're saving this for some of the new features that are coming at 1.8 with banners. Uh, if you haven't seen those videos, uh, Zizumavoid does some of those. Check those out. It's pretty exciting to see what's coming new. I'm going to skip this for now. That's just a railway system that takes me up to the middle bridge layer of the towers. But when we come in the entrance here, you can see that I've got a display of some skulls here. Yeah, I know you can't get those in survival. It's a nice touch. We're using essentials, so you can buy these for you know, money using an in-game economy. And I thought that looked a little bit nice there. Uh, and we've got some bookshelves here just for decor and ender chest. And I will show you pretty quickly here. Got a nice little torch key secret entrance that opens up a stairwell down to our vault room. And the vault room here has storage for just about everything we could need. I'm not going to go through all of that. I can put a link up if you guys are interested into how I organize my items, but pretty much it's the same categories that a lot of folks use. Uh, and you can see that I've tried to show an item that represents the different sorts of things that we put in here. There's also a button on this side if I wanted to shut it up while I was down here, and then no one would see me. And you can sort of see the sticky pistons and the block replacers and that sort of thing. I'm not going to do a tutorial on that right now because, quite honestly, that's not my design. But it does work, and I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm just going to put that back for now, and we'll continue the tour. So in the main room, this area shows where the items come in from the mob farm up above. So you can see that's working pretty well. We've got a fair amount of gunpowder, uh, quite a few bones, and a few errant enderpearls from testing, some string, some rotten flesh, and a miscellaneous bucket for the other items that drop, mostly arrows. This is our auto smelter, so we've got quite a bit of fuel up in this other chest. And as that's used, it automatically replaces it in these furnaces. And whatever smelts in these furnaces ends up coming down into this chest, so I can drop off m multiple chests worth of items. They'll all go into different furnaces and then compile down in here. And we've got a brewing station for emergency potions. Now, obviously, that's a pretty lame brewing station, but we have the fully automatic Tango Tech version in our town hall. So when we get to the town hall tour later on, I'll explain more about that. This is a shortcut over to the east tower, but for now I'm going to go up one side and down the other. So you can see we still haven't done a lot with the interior here. There's just some lighting and some windows here. Um, I'm still saving a lot of these rooms for later suggestions. If you guys do have one, you think it would look pretty cool in one of these round rooms, please do let me know. I'm still looking for ideas to fill this out. Uh, it's not very exciting right now, so we're just going to keep on going right up to the top. And you can see this is a pretty tall tower. This doorway here is the end point of that rail car you saw in the beginning, so we can come right up to this middle point of the towers. And you can see that right above me here is the bridge connecting my two towers, and there's a service entrance of sorts right here underneath. So we're going to skip that and go upstairs a little bit more again. This layer here gives me the best vantage point. You can see I've got some of these glass banners. Uh, shout out to Zombie Cleo, that's where I got the idea for these. And they look pretty neat up here. I am excited, as I said, to see that in 1.8 we'll have real banners. But looking down here, you can see Bricktown. And some of these buildings, I was able to basically replicate regular village buildings using bricks instead of stone. And some of them I've been able to design myself, and I'll show you some of those a little bit later. And of course, you can see a statue of me, Brick Waffle, right out there. Out to this side, you can see the rest of the savanna and some desert that we have surrounding us, so that's pretty nice. Uh, there is actually a village out that way where I was able to lure a few villagers back. And this is the Brick Waffle bedroom with our lava chandelier. I'm pretty, f I'm, uh, pretty fond of that design. Um, I think it looks pretty nice. If you guys have any comments on that, suggestions, of course, as always, happy to hear them. But going down on this side, we do have a few more things. Obviously, that's the connection from the other tower under bridge. 
And when we get down a few more layers, you can see that we have a few of our devices put in down here. So on this side, we can go out to the farm. And this is just a traditional farm out of the back of the towers. Uh, we've got some nice beds here with alternating rows of crops so that they grow as quickly as possible. You see I've got a horse tied up out there in a small little fenced-in pen. Uh, but this is really just where I can get emergency food if I need to and replant it. Right now I've got uh, some other farms that make that less relevant. I'm going to show you that here in just a second. All right. Over here you see that uh, connects back to the main room of the first tower. Obviously that orange carpet makes it pretty obvious which ones go where. And this entrance goes out to Bricktown, but before we take that, we're going to go down to the basement of this tower and see that this is our rail duplicating machine. Now this design is not mine, uh, but it does work if you want to duplicate anything like powered rails. Uh, you basically just turn this machine on, stand right where I was standing, and it's pretty noisy, but you put a uh, rail right here, you hold down, you keep placing it, and every time this machine moves, it'll pop up two of those rails. It doesn't work with regular rails, but it means you can make all the powered rails, detector rails, activator rails you want. Um, I'm sure if you look for this rail duplicator device online, you can find it. It's not my design, so I'm, I don't really want to do a tutorial on it. Uh, don't like taking other people's ideas without their permission. Uh, but it does work pretty effectively, and it helps us build things like this railway out to our mine. Now, I'm sure right now you guys can hear the chickens. And that's from when we come down to our farming area down here. This is basically a straightforward melon farm. This is an automatic sugarcane farm. And as these grow, a butt update powers these pistons, which knocks them down into a water stream, into a tripwire design, and we can pick that up right here. And this is the chicken cooker, uh, which is Zumavoid's design. You can see that it's collecting some cooked chicken and a few feathers as well. And that means that I have all the food I need without having to do anything. Down here, this goes to the dungeons. On this server, we actually did use um, MC Dungeon to generate out some procedurally generated dungeons. Uh, this one's been thoroughly explored by myself and Sakala, um, but you can see that these are pretty interesting. They drop some random bits of treasure. It's configurable. It works in single player and multiplayer, and it adds something else to do in Minecraft when you get bored of just building things. So that's more or less it for the towers. I haven't spent a lot of time on those. I've been more interested in doing Bricktown out here, which I'm going to take you to now, and also doing some community server projects. So let's go out to Bricktown. It is getting dark. Uh, you can see that there's glowstone eyes in the statue and some lava syrup in his chest, and I think that turned out really well. I was inspired by Mumbo Jumbo's statue of a similar caricature style. Obviously, that's not exactly the scale, but I think it looks pretty funny. I'm a big fan. Here we've got some stables with our horses and iron armor. And over here we've got our villagers and a couple of donkeys. So in this area, you can see that we've got some fences separating everything. When I first put this in and fenced it all off to protect the villagers, uh, pretty much all of them gathered into this one building at night. And that was pretty silly and then they would never go back to that side of town. So periodically we have some gates that we can go through that villagers can't. And that also makes sure that there's an iron golem in each major section. So all these buildings here, these are standard Minecraft buildings. I'm sure you've seen these in every village that uh, you've ever seen in your world. The only difference here is, of course, we used brick. No surprise. And we've done a different little garden out here. Here's the standard church and the blacksmith done in brick. And it's actually pretty... I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this. I like just changing one kind of item in a standard building. It makes it look pretty different. On this side, however, these are custom buildings that I put together. So let me open this and go through. If I can close that again. This is the Waffle Shack, and you can see that this is our restaurant. So we've got some tables here. We're using carpets. Uh, we've got a nice little kitchen back here, and this even dispenses some food at you. Uh, since I've got all that chicken, you can press this and just get some chicken when you're here. Nice little sink and some furnaces. And of course, upstairs, we've got a room that still needs to be decorated and an outdoor patio. Starting to look pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And right next door to that, we have this sort of uh, medievally inspired building. Brick Manor, and you can see that this is pretty popular with the locals. Um, it's also got some of these piston chairs and chest in here, a little picture. Upstairs, we've got a jukebox, a little brewing station, crafting tables, and a picture window. And up at the very top, we've got a double bed, nicely decorated, and attic storage with a little lookout window. So that's, that's pretty handy. I thought this one turned out pretty well. 
if you guys would like to see more about building stuff like this, um, I could start doing some of those. I don't think I'm the best builder on YouTube. I would never claim to be. But some of that turned out really nicely, and I'm pretty happy with it. Now you can see that the zombies get to sit out here and be hungry. Tough for them. This little pool has some glowstone in it. It's deep enough that uh, it would definitely drown uh, a few monsters if they got stuck in there for long enough and you just put a little block over the top of it. Generally speaking, I'm not really using that for anything other than decoration. But this way, and you can see, hello skeleton. Let's get rid of him real quick. This road is a major highway system that connects all of the major areas in our town. So let's grab one of these horses and take a ride. I don't need that rotten flesh. This horse is a terrible jumper, so that might be a little bit trickier than it should be. All right. So heading out of here, you can see that brick waffle looks pretty good at night. Uh, you can see the mob farm in the distance and that little building right up there. Since I'm using Optifine, I can zoom in. That's the observing platform, and that has a little ender pearl elevator so you can get up there and just AFK overnight and get lots of monster drops. And we also have some banners. Let me actually go back a little bit. Hello, creeper. Try to ignore you for now. You can see those banners are glass with lava behind them. They look pretty cool at night as well. All right, enough of that. All right. That's going to be problematic. So let's just keep going here, and we'll ignore all those monsters for the time being. Don't need that arrow. So this first intersection here on Brick Lane, this takes us to our first four-way intersection. You can see that this leads east to some of our other friends. This leads to the town hall and shops. And down here, this leads to Sakala's Ranch. So we'll take a quick ride out on the East Highway and visit some of our buddies out here, show you what they're working on. A lot of this stuff is work in progress, and we do have a few more folks on the server, so I'm happy to say things have been a lot more active than they were when we first started up. We've got some builders who are new to Minecraft who are doing some pretty cool things, um, being very creative for somebody who's only been playing for a few weeks in some cases. And then we have a few vets who've been doing some bigger projects as well. So this obviously took a long time to build, and it was the original pattern with the alternating stone bricks and cobblestone. Uh, that was courtesy of one of our new players, Torcada. So credit to him. It looks really nice. And these fences actually help keep this pretty secure at night as well. You can see that we've got torch lighting. We don't have walls along the whole thing, although we could. That just requires a lot more cobblestone than we've been able to, to scrounge up so far. it would be a pretty easy addition if, if we decide we need to do that in the future. The advantage here is you can just turn right off the highway without having to jump. So what we're coming up to first is Santana's ziggurat here. You can see that he's got a nice little floating nether portal out there, and he's still working on this, putting it together. But uh, once this is done, this is going to be pretty cool looking. Big desert pyramid. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that completed. So we're going to ride back over here, and I will catch you when we're back at that intersection. All right, here we are coming back to the intersection, and let's take a quick ride down to Sakala's Ranch. And uh, along the way here, you can see that in the desert... We've got this kind of flat area over here, and that's because we have a slime farm sitting right down there. That's working pretty well, We're trying to collect all of our slime balls that we can for 1.8, so we can use those to make slime blocks, make some more interesting things. Um, if you haven't seen the video I did on the slime bridge, the, the basically the bridgeless moat, you can go check that out. It's pretty interesting, I think. Uh, hopefully you find that interesting as well. And Sakala, as you can tell, is a big fan of horses. So she's got one of every variety, every color, every pattern, and obviously they all have different stats and then these over here are some of the ones she's using for breeding that one looks like it's trying to take a little bath and she's got some names here on some of these as well it's the old gray mare that's misty black beauty uh, some famous horse names in here of course and paint it black it's a nice tribute and all of these are pretty well organized as well so she can breed and have all the different horse colors uh, she also has a shop in town now where she's taking orders if somebody wants a specific color horse she'll keep breeding until she gets that one and send that over to you of course, she also has stables for her and Krelios over here, and Krelios has a little mule breeding area with a horse and a donkey. You can also see that she's got a sugarcane farm over here of the same design. I built this one for her as well, and this is a little bit more extensive chicken killer than the one I have in my base. This has two functions. Some chicken drowns so that you can get raw chicken for turning in for villager trades, and some of it cooks. And in this case, all of that items, all those items get pumped down here through hoppers into a sorting system in the bottom of her base so that she can separate it all out. I'm not going to take you through her house. I'll save that for, to let her do if she ever wants to do a video of it. See that we also put in originally um, some 
Melon and Pumpkin Farms here. This is uh, Mumbo Jumbo's design for the automated hopper cart version. And this is the automatic village breeder that still works in 1.7 and allows villagers down underneath this to keep spawning. And that supplies her with infinite villagers and a villager trading system that we in, were that was inspired by is a zoom avoid. All right, over here is the dam, and that is part of the road system. So you can see that bridge over there is the other way from Bricktown. That goes across the dam and out to Town Hall. So we're going to come take a look at that. And that little area right there is a stronghold. Sakala was fortunate enough to be built that close to the portal room of a stronghold, so it's a really easy way for her to get to the end. When we go up here, we can take a look. Obviously, that goes back to Bricktown. And this way heads towards Town Hall. But this dark forest I'm pretty happy with. This looks really neat coming right through here, leveling that out, and you can see the overgrowth here from these trees looks pretty cool. Coming through the swamp, we're going to be getting pretty close to Town Hall now. There's a turnoff here, and to our left, it's going to head over to Sonata Block's place, so we can check that out in just a minute. And then to the right is Town Hall. So let's go ahead and head over to Sonata Block's place, just so I'll show you a couple of things. It's the other end of the East Highway. If you guys have suggestions that you'd like to like me to try out, different styles of video you'd like me to make, I'm still very open to any of your suggestions. Uh, pretty much I want to make whatever people want to watch. So this tunnel goes right through a mesa, as you can see. It's pretty straightforward, not a whole lot going on here. But when we get to the end of this tunnel, if we look to the right, Sonata Block has built an enormous gold farm in the overworld. Uh, and of course we know that's only going to work until 1.8 unless you're actively killing the pigmen. So he has a design in there that uses some TNT because as long as a player lights it, it counts. But you can see just how many nether portals he has stacked up over here. And underneath that there's some water that flushes them all into a killing room. Now there's two modes that this can work in and he's got a nice little redstone system that he, I helped him put in. With a switch of a lever he goes from a drowning system that pushes them all into a drowning chamber and collects their items and hoppers to a system that blocks them off from going down that stream and lets him kill them with TNT. Works out pretty well and that should make it a little more versatile when we get to 1.8. At this end of the road you can see that it goes up onto a small island and over to Sonata Block's little modern house here. Looks pretty nice, I believe that's a Corrales design, he did a really good job with that. And you can see he's got quite a bit of sugarcane and that is as far as the road goes right now. So I'm going to head back to that intersection we passed earlier that went to Town Hall and I'll catch up with you guys there. All right, and here we are at that intersection that leads out to the North Highway and back to Bricktown, and this way leads down to the Town Hall. So when we get down here, I'm going to actually switch over and use our Nether Railway system to get to a couple of the other bases. The reason for that is this highway is still under construction, and Torcada is busily connecting up his section and Umbrio's section over to the main base here. So you'll be able to see that uh, some of that work is in progress. We'll try and get a tour and see how far he's gotten. Um, I actually haven't seen it in about a day or two, so I'm kind of curious to see how far he's gone. But right up here, right before we get to sunset, is the town hall. That's actually a pretty nice little view. So off to the left, this big uh, acacia wood structure. This is the horse race speed testing track. So you can see that we can test horse speeds by just running over these pressure plates, going to the other end, and then counting the number of items in the hopper. But this road has uh, a couple of branches here. When you get into town, it changes the lighting style a little bit. We've got some nice redstone torches, and that goes off to our zoo down here. So let's take a quick look at the zoo before it gets to be too dark. And yes, if you're listening closely, that is a ghast you just heard. We've got some nether monsters that we've managed to bring through portals and store over here. So I'm going to leave my horse right here for now. And then I'm going to turn down my sound a little bit because those monsters are going to get pretty loud pretty quickly. Alright, so in this cage we have a variety of cats. They like to dig and they try to get out, but they can't, of course, with this little glass barrier. And we have our farm display with sheep, uh, pig, and cow. Yes, these are very clever names. I'm pretty happy with those. And some chickens as well. On this side, we have the microcosm of villager housing, a little bit of their wheat farm, and of course, somehow we have another pig that spawned in here with the golem, and the golem has some zombie heads to keep him company. And on this side, we've got a couple of wolves who are... Oh, there they go. Now, they're, now at least one of them is looking at me. There they go. 
most of this day looking this direction. I have no idea what's so interesting over there, but that keeps them occupied, so good for them. Downstairs in the zoo, let's take a quick look down here. We've got some several exhibits, uh, one of which is our squid exhibit. So you can see there's some sand and gravel in there, some water that's flowing, and it's really hard to see these squids. Um, for now, this is as close as we're going to get. In 1.8, obviously, we're going to try and get some guardians and bring those all the way over here. That's going to be pretty interesting. I'm not sure how we're going to do that yet to put some guardians in the exhibit. On this side, we have our horse, our equine exhibit. So you can see we've used wool to put up a little painted background here and given them some water and some hay and a couple of different horses. Over here, we have the mushrooms in our little mycelium area. Um, that is actual mycelium back there and some mushrooms that we've partially put in the wall. I think that turned out pretty well. Uh, concession stand, of course, any zoo needs to have some snacks, so we've got a cheeseburger right there. Out on this side, we have a swamp biome that has a witch in her tiny little hut and a slime. That witch is not a big fan of looking at the crowd. She just tends to put her face in the corner and count to ten. Um, good for her. On this side, we have our graveyard exhibit. You can see we have a zombie and a skeleton. And up there, we have a cave spider. And I cannot tell you how much of a pain in the butt that was to get a cave spider in there. Um, well, actually, that's not even a cave spider. It looks like that's just a regular spider. Oh, it looks like our cave spider might be dead. That is really unfortunate considering how much time that actually took. Over here we have the creeper exhibit, and he's hiding in the corner there with the bat. At one point we had lava back here in the cave, and the creeper loved to just throw himself in the lava and commit suicide. After getting creepers down in here several times and replacing when they blew up before we could put the glass in, we just decided to take the lava out. And of course this is our nether exhibit. You can see the gas back there, he's right up in the back of his little put area. We've got a couple of magma cubes. We've got a zombie pigman, a blaze, and a wither skeleton. This one was actually not as bad as you might think. We put this big exhibit back here, put a portal in, lured them all through, and just put the portal out. It was pretty straightforward to get these things into the overworld. And I'll tell you what, you can hear that gas just south of town, and that scares the crap out of people who are new to the server. They have no idea why they're hearing gas sounds in the overworld. But that's really it for the zoo, so let's get back on our trusty steed and head over to Town Hall. I'll show you the rest of that. Moving right along, you can see the giant cupcake over here on the right-hand side. That is Sakala's Bake Shop. And that's a pretty nice little thing. Um, we got some redstone blocks up there for a nice cherry on top of that sundae, or that cupcake, rather. And that looks pretty good. Over here, we have the Zombie Villager Rehab Clinic. Oh, hello, Creeper. Get out of here. Yeah, I see you, too. The zombies really like to try and get in there because there is a villager in there at the moment. Um, oftentimes, they will just ignore me, and they'll just stand right there like that. Hop off here for a moment. You can see that when we come into this re uh, rehab center, authorized personnel only, and there is a villager in here that we've cured, but the idea is that you can lure, let a zombie villager follow you in here, open this door, once they're in, you close it, hop out with the ladder, and then when you open this lever, it lets you put them into a minecart, and then you can put your temporary rails in, take them wherever you need to take them. And the chests out here, of course, have laboratory equipment, which are splash potions, splash potions of weakness, and golden apples. This is a pretty good way to get villagers and transport them. Uh, oftentimes, people will take them over to the nether hub, and you can see there's a crowd out here, big fans of the zombie rehab clinic, or protesters. I'm not really sure which they are. Maybe they don't want to be rehabilitated, and they're trying to free their brothers. Uh, I think they're just hungry. In any case, this is the town hall. Uh, we'll go in there in just a moment. Let me show you the rest of this town first. Whoa, hello, several spiders. And there. Good. Thankfully, we have a nice bow. This is the automatic brewing foundry. This is the design that Tango Tech came up with, and it allows you to customize what ingredients you want. You just place the ingredients in these droppers, and you can see we've got oops, <laughs> several of some of these and just a few of others. Um, when, we're, when we've selected the ingredients we want, we just hit this lever and it will continue to brew as long as there's water bottles up here, which we've got plenty of, and they'll come out in this chest at the bottom. So you can configure this, it's pretty nice, you just tell it what kind of things you want, throw your ingredients in, and walk away, it'll just keep brewing. There's also a nice little ender chest here so that people can easily transport their potions back home, and some instructions that people have clicked on how to brew. If you haven't seen Tango Tech's uh, video tutorial of how to build that, it's pretty outstanding, I do recommend it. Over here, and then we got another spider. Get out of here, spider. We've got the stable or the barn here that's got Krellios' mules, so you can buy a lead for $250 and get a free mule. Uh, kind of think his sign says the other way around, but that's pretty handy. They all come with saddles and saddlebags. And Sakala has a color to order horses, 
So you can send orders by mail using the uh, Essentials plugin, or write a book in the chest and leave it there, and she will fulfill that order. Uh, Sinada Block has a sundry shop. This is where he sells odds and ends that he thinks other people might want, and they vary in price depending on how hard it is to get them. But you can see there's several signs in here on either side of that. Whoa, hey, there is a big slime because town is very near a swamp. Um, and it gets to be a little dangerous doing these tours at night. Thankfully, I didn't turn my sound completely off. Oop. And there's another one. And a baby zombie. Alright, so let's get on foot and kill some of these things. See if we can collect a few slime balls. That's actually pretty helpful. And that swamp is apparently teeming with slimes. Hmm. Okay, well, it's not a full moon, but the moon is up. For those of you who don't know, uh, slimes spawning in swamps is dependent on the phase of the moon. And if it's a new moon, for example, none will spawn at all. All right, we'll collect up some experience. Over here is Sakala's flower shop, and inside, just like the uh, Sonata Block Sundry, she's got a bunch of signs with different kinds of flowers. And you can see around the back here, we have a nice little greenhouse with some of the examples. I think that looks pretty good as well. <laughs> so, let's bring our horse into the town hall and leave him there while we go check out the last two places. And then this takes us into our nether hub. So you can see that we have one line that's out of order, but otherwise these different lines, like this one, goes off to my base. We have half slabs in the floor, half slabs in the ceiling, and that keeps anything from spawning in here. There are a few exceptions, like powered rails with button, but these blocks are pretty rare, and so we don't generally see a lot of zombie pigment up here. Each of these goes off into a different direction. This one also goes to our um, end portal that the community can use. And over here we're going to take one of these minecarts over to Torcada's house and check out some of what he's been working on. So I'm going to put this on here, but since rail carts are so loud, I'm going to pick up again when we get down there. Alright, here we are at the end of the line. We'll just top out here and take the portal through to Torcata's place. So Torcata is relatively new to Minecraft, but you wouldn't know it from looking at his little temple room here. This is a pretty nice way to come in. He's got some featured stones in here, a little water fountain, chest with some supplies, and out here is Torcata's base. So. You can see he's got a jungle tower that leads up to a building that has a skyway that connects to his neighbor Penumbrio. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. It's a pretty cool little ride. But out here he's got quite a few animals. He's got a little starting house here that he used when he was first uh, basically making a shelter. A couple of garden areas. He's got a chicken cooker down here that he meant to close up, I'm sure. Guest house. This little guest house has everything you might need for your first couple of days if you're coming to visit including some stone tools and a bucket in case you find yourself in need of relief. And this is the nice little manor house that he has that overlooks the lake here. So you can see this is disposal, that's trash only, that goes into the disposal tutorial that I showed uh, on my channel a long time ago. He's got a villager here that you can see he brought in with some rails and is keeping for later. And down here he has the little fire pit, which has some lava that he's managed to protect here. Some tiki torches with glowstone, and out here, a nice little view of the edge of the jungle where it goes into the swamp. A lot of jungle vines out here since this base is, in fact, in a jungle. And a little bit of water coming off of these uh, tall trees here leading up to the skyway. But before we go over there, let's take a quick hop over to the other side. Oop, that's not exactly where I wanted to end up, but it's pretty close. You can see that we have Torcata Towers up here. This is where he's been working to build... Uh, a better lookout point for his area. And off to the left down there is an entrance to his mine. That's pretty cool, but I'm going to let him show you that if he ever feels like doing a video. Um, I do want to show that he's got a nice little farm area over here, and he's got a storage silo that he's been working on to store all of these crops. And this road here is the road that leads over to Penumbrio's place, and this is what started us on the highway project in the first place. You can see he's got a jungle wood inlay. I followed the same pattern that he set up and used bricks for mine. I think it looks pretty nice. I really like this bridge, too, this covered bridge. It looks really good. So kudos to Torcata for that really nice design. We're going to walk along a little further here. And you will see along the way that he's got some fences here where you might have a, a drop-off on the side. This is, of course, safety first. Wouldn't want anyone to fall and injure their ankles on this road. Uh, I have not put in similar walls on my set of highway yet, uh, but I think that's a pretty good idea, and eventually I'd like to do that. Pantorque Waystation Birch. This is for the Penumbrio Torcada uh, Highway. 
and this is just another little place for you to hold up for the night if it gets dark and you're getting overwhelmed by monsters. Continuing through this little framed tunnel, we go up here, and you can see he's also lit up the, the highway with some torches on trees, a few torches on these walls, and you can see it goes off in the distance till about the halfway point there, and when it turns over to Dark Oak Wood, that's officially the line that goes to Penumbrio's place. Out here, this where it starts to duplicate is where Torcata is building the highway to town. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I do want to show you a couple of really cool features. This underwater tunnel looks pretty great. I like the glass in the roof of that so you can see it and you can tell it goes down here. If you've ever been out to the east coast and you've seen some of those underwater bridge tunnels, that's pretty cool. Obviously they can't do glass in the ceiling given the amount of water, but in Minecraft we can and I think this looks really nice. So I'm not going to show you that. There's a, he's working on a special project over there. If you're playing on the server and watching the video, um, ask him when it's finished and go check that out because I think you're going to be impressed. If you're watching on this channel, um, hopefully when he's all done with it, he'll let me give a, a nice little tour of that as well. I think it's going to be pretty exciting. So coming back to this little marker here, we've got a nice redstone lamp that marks the official halfway point. I don't know if it's exactly halfway in terms of blocks. I kind of doubt it. Uh, but this is the line that leads to Penumbrio's area. Penumbrio is another one of our new players, and he likes the extreme hills. So you can see that he's got a pretty steep uh, ramp up here on the highway. And over here, you can see the Skyway coming in over here and a guest tower with a beacon in it that uh, gives him some nice light up there in his base. And you can see that there is a wool farm that he's put together here, which has basically just got one sheep in it for the moment. A couple of stables that I built for him as a welcome to the server. And then the basic shelter he used when he was starting out. Obviously, he's expanded a little bit since then. And you can see over here, he's become a big fan of obsidian. So he's using that to build his walkways inside this very fortified area. Um, I'm not going to go all the way through this, but just to show you inside, again, he's got lots of space to work with. He's just started trying to figure out what he's going to do with all that, I think. I'm pretty impressed with how much he's been able to build just in terms of scale. Of course, there's a little bit of water over here, and his iron golem seems to have found his way into that. Uh, there's some sugar cane being farmed. Looks like a couple of pumpkins, and that's it for now. And, of course, his tower over here. We can go up to the top and take a look at everything, and that nether portal will let us quickly get back into the nether hub. So I'm going to throw a pearl up here, and let's go outside and take a look out here. Over this way is the ladder up, whoop, ladder up to the skyway. So we're not going to actually take that for now. We're just going to drop back down here. But that is a quick way for Penumbrio and Torcata to connect to each other. So let's just drop a pearl down there and grab a quick bite of chicken. It'd be very embarrassing to kill myself under pearling around in a server tour video. All right, here we are back at the Nether Hub, and I just wanted to say thank you guys for the 100 of you that have subscribed so far. It's really impressive. I'm very happy that I, I can uh, make videos that at least 100 people enjoy. I know that a couple of thousand people have seen the Dragon Skull tutorial at this point. That is fantastic. Makes me feel really good. If you like this video too, do please give me a like. That really helps motivate me to keep doing these. If you really like them, please do subscribe. And as always, I've been Brick Waffle. Thank you for watching.